love him so When he flips that dough He's Pizza Boy USA What is up guys? Welcome back to another one If you are new to the channel I am Gold County I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube And today We are in the new 2020 Ford Mustang GT Obviously I'm super excited to be in this one Because I own one A 2019 Ford Mustang GT Having said that There's actually several changes For the 2020 Mustang GT Not huge ones But several of them nonetheless So I will be going over all of them For you guys in this particular video. And just like last year, this is still the number one selling sports car in the world. So that's the reason I bought one. A lot of bang for your buck in this thing. So in this video, I will be testing out everything from acceleration to braking the sound system to exhaust clip, all of that. And this one does have the active exhaust. So I'm excited for that as well. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. It said there will be a few different configurations you can go with for the 2020 Mustang GT. First one being your base fastback, starting at $35,630. Then there is the premium fastback, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $39,630. And the premium convertible starting at $45,130. And so if you were curious, all of those prices increase $275 from the 2019 model year, so a modest increase for all those. Nonetheless, powering this beast is going to be a five liter naturally aspirated V8, putting out 460 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, 420 pound-feet of torque available at 4,600 RPM, power sent to the rear wheels, of course, through your choice of either a six-speed manual, which comes standard, or an optional 10-speed automatic with paddle shifters going for $1,595 if you wanted to go with that option, but I actually have the 10-speed automatic and I still love it, although I've driven the six-speed in the Mustang GT plenty of times, and I absolutely love that too. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to personal preference there, but there's a big difference when it comes to speed as well with those transmissions. For instance, zero to 60 time in the 10-speed comes in at 3.9 seconds. Zero to 60 in the six-speed comes in at 4.3 seconds, so pretty substantial there. Although many would argue the six-speed is, of course, a little more engaging, the 10-speed is going to be quicker. Quarter mile time, get this, 11.9 seconds seconds from the factory that's pretty darn sweet top speed electronically limited at 155 miles per hour and mpg numbers come in at 15 in the city 25 highway taking premium unleaded fuel and i average about 22 miles per gallon i think it's like 22.3 in my last 9,000 miles or so in case anybody wanted a real number when it comes to that but before we get to the paddle shifter test here or any kind of acceleration test in the mustang I did want to mention the drive modes and so there's a couple toggle switches located just in front of the shifter there they're giving you different drive modes like normal, sport, track, drag, and snow and wet. So essentially those drive modes will adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the traction control. And there's actually a separate toggle switch for the steering sensitivity as well. I wanted to mention that, but when it comes to those drive modes, personally, I tend to leave it on sport. That is the fun one where you can really hear the down shifts and it shifts quite frequently, but quickly with the 10 speed automatic, I will say that. So I love leaving it in sport mode. That's just my personal preference. But if you did want to take it to the track, you do have that driving mode as well, as well as if it rains or snows, that mode is going to be there for you as well. But like I was mentioning though, just to the left of that drive mode button, you have your steering modes. And so they will include normal, comfort, and sport. And sport is the one I leave it in there. It provides a much weightier steering feel. So it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. And really one of the best steering feels of any of the last 500 cars I've reviewed. And that is part of the reason why I got the Mustang as well. I love the steering feel on this thing. But anyways, now let me touch on track apps before we get to that zero to 60. And so track apps can be accessed through the steering wheel mounting controls on the right side there. It's going to be displayed up on the small digital gauge cluster in the middle there. That gives you things like your acceleration timer for zero to 60 quarter mile. There's also your braking performance, 60 to zero. There's also lap timer. There's a bunch of different statistics that actually get saved up there as well. So if you wanted to do a zero to 60 run as I have done on my channel plenty of times in my Mustang, that's where you're gonna be able to see how quickly you were actually able to pull that off. And so I love that feature as well. But that feature is available only in track mode, which turns off the traction control. So make sure you got some sticky tires like the one on this today so you could fully utilize the grip and the acceleration in this beast. But so anyways, having now mentioned all of that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's start with the paddle shifters. I want to see how quickly they react for us here. I kind of already know, but after that, we'll do the acceleration test, giving the control back to the Mustang. And let's go ahead and do the paddle shifter test now. Let's see how quickly they react for us here. Whoa. Yep. They're quick. 
quick. <laughs> I love them in my car too. I kind of wish they were magnesium rather than the plastic that we have here, but dang, they are quick. Let me tell you guys that. Paddle sifters are instantaneous, so you are not gonna be disappointed when you're using them, as I never am when I use them in my own car. But anyways, let's give control back to the Mustang. I'm just gonna put it back in drive there, and let's do a quick little acceleration test, and let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 Mustang GT here up to speed. All right, you guys ready? We're gonna use the acceleration timer, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of spinning, just ever so slightly, but let me tell you guys, it feels absolutely wonderful. And on the street, what I've been able to do is 4.7 seconds for that zero to 60, but on the track, it has been shown tons of times, zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds, because you get no spinning whatsoever. So 5.2 seconds on the street is pretty darn good. Again, I was able to pull off 4.7 on my own Mustang GT, and it will do 3.9 seconds on the track for you. So plenty of an acceleration, plenty of fun here in the Mustang GT. Wow, that gets your heart rate up, man, that's fun. Did wanna mention with that acceleration though, if you were to take the Mustang GT to the track, there is a line lock feature as well. It essentially locks the front brakes, allowing the rear wheels and tires to spin freely, warming up the tires before you actually get up to the line. So I did wanna mention that as well. That is of course there for you too. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 14 inch ventilated front disc with four piston front calipers. In the back, 13 inch ventilated rear disc with single piston rear calipers and that is the standard setup and i want to put it that way because there is actually a performance package level one and two available for the mustang gt the performance pack level one is what we have today that actually goes for five thousand one hundred and ninety five dollars which is actually an increase over the 2019 performance pack level one back when i bought it it was three thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars so we did jump up there a little bit but level two goes for six thousand five hundred dollars either setup that you go with gives you 15 inch ventilated front disc by Brembo of course with Brembo six piston front caliper so quite a larger braking setup a lot better braking feel and the braking feel is absolutely amazing in the Mustang GT which brings me back to my original point when I first started this video tons of bang for your buck when it comes to performance with the Mustang let me tell you so absolutely no complaints from me there touching on suspension and handling up front you get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent rear suspension and you will also get monotube shocks of course cross axis suspension joints as well and if you were to go with either performance package you will also get a strut tower brace heavy duty front springs k brace larger radiator unique chassis tuning an upsized rear sway bar and a torsen differential as well so plenty of suspension components if you were to go with either performance pack hence part of the reason why i actually went with the performance pack level one in my own mustang magnaride damping suspension actually comes with the performance pack level two and it's available as a standalone option as well but that's always an option i like to recommend and perhaps my only regret the one i wish I would have gone with in my own 2019 Mustang because it really does give you the best of both worlds. And so it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adapting to the road's imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering. Again, giving you the best of both worlds. So I definitely like that option there. Overall, as far as ride quality goes, it's perfectly fine, especially with that Magnaride damping suspension. You're not gonna be disappointed there. If you were to lower it and increase the wheel size, like I did personally, ride quality is of course gonna suffer a little bit, but still I'm plenty fine with it, what I got set up right now. Steering feel is absolutely amazing, especially in that sports steering mode, no issues there. Cabin noise is wonderful, I put it that way, because of the exhaust system and specifically the active exhaust that we have here today. I will do an exhaust clip, a little comparison with the different modes later in the video. So do want to mention that, love the cabin noise here. And when it comes to visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back, certainly better than the Camaro. Really wonderful visibility when it comes to a Mustang, more than you would expect in a sports car, quite honestly. Rain sensing windshield wipers actually come with the safe and smart package. It goes for $1,000, wanted to mention that too. Essentially what that is, is whenever the Mustang detects any kind of rainfall or even drizzle, it automatically turns on the windshield windshield wipers is just one last thing you have to worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on enjoying the drive so love that as well and by the way if you were to go with that package that also includes pre-collision assist automatic emergency braking automatic high beams lane keep alert and adaptive cruise control as well but so that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's go ahead and find a spot and let's now take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2024 Mustang 
GT finished in magnetic metallic. All right, you guys, here she is, the 2024 Mustang GT. Let me jump into the colors since I mentioned this one is magnetic metallic. Deleted colors for 2020 are going to include Need for Green, the best color ever made, Orange Fury, Ruby Red, and Ingot Silver. Replacing some of those, the new colors for 2020 are going to be Twister Orange, Rapid Red, Grabber Lime, which looks awesome in my opinion, and iconic silver. So those are gonna be the new colors for 2020. Well, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights up front with LED signature lighting come standard. They of course do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED fog lamps just below coming standard as well. And of course you have that Chrome Pony logo up front and there is a black accent package I wanted to mention. That goes for $995. That's actually gonna give you a black Pony logo along with a black black rear pony logo or 5.0 badging and the black 5.0 badging on the front fenders as well along with a gloss black roof and unique 19 by 8.5 inch black alloy wheels so quite a bit actually with that with that black accent package so that's there for you if you wanted it hood vents up top here let me show those to you guys these actually are functional you guys can see there's actually holes in those so it does actually allow the engine to cool a little bit there and if you go with either performance pack level one or performance pack level two you will get unique front lips with those two particular packages as well let's open then make our way to the side of the mustang here black window surrounds coming standard taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors with integrated turret signals if you go with the premium trim that premium trim is what's going to give you the integrated turret signals and actually heated side mirrors with the premium as well taking a look down a little bit 5.0 badging again on the front fenders and taking a look at the wheel setup 18 by 8 inch aluminum alloys coming standard 19 by 8.5 inch black alloys again with the black accent package 19 by 9 in the front 19 by 9 and a half in the back and these are going to be black multi-spoke wheels with the performance package level one that of course is what you were looking at right now so a staggered fitment there downside is you can't rotate the tires plus side is you're going to get better grip because it's a little thicker width in the back at least and with that performance pack level two even thicker tires coming in at 19 by 10 and a half up front 19 by 11 in the back so excellent handling because of that with the performance pack level two and there are actually other designs available if you wanted to go that route as well but so now let's go ahead and make our way to the back first thing i actually wanted to mention to you guys take a look at this shark fin antenna up top i usually don't make a big deal about that but with the mustang Typically it's not there. In 2019, it was this circular dome kind of thing and it was a lot smaller and much more out of the way, but that shark fin antenna kind of stands out a bit more. Not sure if I'm digging it or not, but that's one of the subtle changes for the 2020 Mustang. So do want to mention that nonetheless. Let's go ahead and make our way completely to the back. Performance pack level one spoiler is what you're looking at right now. Of course, the performance pack level two is going to be a black deck lid spoiler. So I actually like the performance pack level one spoiler the best. It's the highest spoiler that Mustang has but still yet it's subtle it looks good back there and a body colored rear spoiler is going to be the standard configuration though it's kind of a lip spoiler back there LED sequential tail lamps coming standard so they are LEDs and sequential meaning when you put the turn signal on it's going to look like those LEDs are sliding from one side to the other so I've always been a big fan of that license plate lighting also comes standard back there you do have a matte black rear diffuser down below there and of course to the sides dual exhaust outlets with quad tips the quad tips is a new thing starting in 2018 previously the gts just had dual exhaust outlets with dual tips so love that the quad tips are there but nonetheless like i mentioned earlier we do have the active valve performance exhaust which goes for 895 dollars if you wanted that option but there is a quiet mode with that sport normal and track so it's going to open and close the exhaust valves essentially so what do you guys say i'll do a little comparison here and let's go ahead and do that exhaust clip
around back when it comes to opening that rear trunk of the Mustang. There is a button on the key fob that you press twice. That is one way to unlock it. Of course, there is a button by the driver's side left knee. That is yet another way. And the kind of secretive way is there's a rubberized button just above the license plate in the back there. That is the third way to go ahead and open up that rear trunk. That third way is probably the way I use the most often. So I love that that's there. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 13.5 cubic feet for the fastback. When you're talking about the convertible though, that comes in at 11.4 cubic feet, a little bit less there. Regardless, if that was not enough space, those rear seats do fold down. There's a 50-50 split. And having said that, I've actually been able to fit four wheels and tires back there when I went to switch them out. So there's actually a decent amount of space back there when you fold those rear seats down. I've also had my dog back there actually as well. But anyways, make your way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at an even 29 inches for the fastback, 29.2 inches for the convertible. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. There's no way I'm gonna be able to fit back there, quite honestly. Kids might be able to fit back there. Of course, you do have latch back there too for car seats, but most definitely adults are not gonna be able to fit back there, unfortunately. But that's as expected in a car like this, really. But make your way to the front seats. Cloth seating is gonna be the standard configuration. That's what I have in mind. They're perfectly comfortable. Six-way power driver's seat comes standard with power lumbar. Six-way power adjustable passenger seat as well. Leather seating, what we have today, is gonna to come with the premium package, and that, of course, is power adjustable as well, and heated and ventilated. I do want to mention there is a red leather available and there's some black and blue contrast stitching available. There's a light ceramic color available. There's a bunch of different configurations you can go with if you were to go with the leather setup at least. But Haro bucket seats are available for $1,595. If you wanted those, it's going to provide you enhanced bolstering. The downside or the trade-off is you can't get heated or ventilated seats with those. That's the trade-off. But anyways, let's now go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is a very smooth leather wrapped steering wheel and you can get a heated steering wheel that is available with the 401a package that goes for $2,200 so you need the premium trim and then it's just an extra package deal with the premium basically but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your mustang logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and the times two button kind of in the middle there that is going to be your remote start which comes standard across the board gotta love that so all you need to do to start that up is simply lock the car first then press that twice and the mustang gt is going to start off for you so that's pretty cool but nonetheless there is a push button start located just in front of the shifter there so all i am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button there and so when it comes to the gauges this is where it's going to differ quite substantially here the standard gauge setup is currently what you're looking at right now also what i have on my mustang perfectly happy with it but the cool setup is the digital gauge cluster found in the 401a package for the premium fastback so you have to get the premium and then again it's an additional package there but that's going to give you a full customizable digital display which is pretty darn sweet if you ask me but even if you don't go with that you still can completely adjust the colors of this digital gauge cluster there's tons of different colors you can pick of course have your very small digital display front and center which again could be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel there it gives you trip a trip b how many miles you have left until you you hit empty there's your oil life meter up there you can also play around with your track apps like i was mentioning earlier to you guys really all that you need is within that small digital gauge cluster so that's why that was perfectly fine for me at least but the digital gauges of course are going to look a lot cooler but touching on overall interior quality there is no sun or moon roof available for the mustang gt I wanted to start by mentioning that because somebody is going to ask dual zoom climate control does come with the premium package and the base 301a package if you wanted those premium pack is also going to add aluminum foot pedal Pedals. Brushed aluminum interior trim comes standard. There's an auto dimming rear view mirror also coming standard. Again, that ambient lighting I was mentioning to you guys that comes with the premium package or for the base fastback, there's a 301A package. That's what you're going to need to get that. And again, that gives you a ton of different colors. It includes ambient lighting on the illuminated door sills, the door handles, cup holders, of course, the gauge colors, and also the small little gauges just above the infotainment screen for your oil pressure and vacuum gauge as well. So it really does adjust quite a bit with that ambient lighting i love it in my particular mustang definitely something i would recommend there universal garage door openers are going to come standard with the premium package that's going to be found on the driver's side sun visor would recommend that that prevents you from getting the rattling garage door opener that you clip to 
of the sun visor that I have. There is a carbon fiber package I wanted to mention that goes for $1,195 that replaces the uh, aluminum trim. But perhaps the first thing I noticed when I got in the 2020 Mustang is yet another change for the 2020 Mustang being just above the passenger side glove box. There is a little insignia or logo and it has the pony logo and it says Mustang 55 years. In my 2019, it just says Mustang. It does not say 55 years. So yet another very small change to the 2024 Mustang GT. So I wanted to mention that once again. But so then getting down to the details here, you do have a little bit of rubberized storage just in front of the shifter there. Also a USB charging port. That's where you're gonna be able to hook up Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. When it comes to the glove box, there's a decent sized glove box and then there's a little yellow button within the glove box. When you press that, you have space to put your owner's manual or whatever, that's gonna be there for you as well. Also a couple cup holders just behind the shifter and within the center armrest. You have yet another USB charging port as well as a 12 volt power outlet in there as well. And overall, interior quality is pretty much as expected for the Mustang. It's not gonna be up to Lexus standards or anything like that, but it is certainly quite nice. And I do wanna also mention with the premium package, you do have some nice leather finishes on the doors with some contrast stitching. You do not get that in the base fastback. So I wanted to mention that that comes with the premium package as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display the standard setup is the sync 4.2 inch display it's not the one i recommend i would go with and what i did go with was the sync 3 8 inch color touchscreen display which you're looking at right now you can get it with the premium package that we have today or you can get it with the base 301a package which is how i got it in my base fastback bluetooth and audio streaming come standard either way android auto apple carplay only comes with the sync 3 you can't get that on the sync of course and that's important because that gives you free navigation once you hook up your smartphone displayed up on that tech display as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs so there's a couple other compatible apps as well up there factory navigation system goes for 995 dollars if you wanted that climate control information you can always find up there as well along with your radio settings and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will get six speakers that is going to be the standard setup with the base fastback nine speaker sound system comes with the premium package that we have today and the base 301a package and then there is an optional Bang & Olufsen 12 speaker sound system that goes for $995 and that includes a subwoofer of course as well but we do have that nine speaker sound system which I have in my own personal car today so what do you say let's go ahead and turn that on see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Honestly, that's one of the things I love about my Mustang as well. That nine speaker sound system, believe it or not, is pretty darn good. Definitely has a ton of bass, plenty of clarity. So no issues for me having owned it for a year and a half now. I have no issues with that sound system whatsoever. Loved it in this as well, it's the same thing. Last thing though I wanted to mention on that tech display at least is when you do put the Mustang in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbag to come standard but in addition to that driver and passenger knee airbags as well it definitely doesn't come standard on every vehicle out there in the back again you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats reverse sensing system is actually gonna come standard as well that is gonna be the parking sensors in the back it's gonna beep at you when you get too close to an object so you're less likely to actually hit something that's always good and again there is a safe and smart package that goes for a thousand dollars and I already mentioned all that it gives you adaptive cruise control rain sensing windshield wipers and a bunch of other stuff did want to also mention though the 41a package for the premium only that is going to give you that blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert so that is the one and only way you were going to get that blind spot monitoring system in case you were interested but overall when it comes to my final thoughts i am quite happy still to this day no regrets with my purchase whatsoever minus wish i would have got that adaptive damping suspension but still even without that i absolutely love my mustang gt in 2019 form and the 2020 is essentially the same thing minus a couple cosmetic updates really and some color changes of course but acceleration is wonderful braking is insane handling is great the steering feel i should say is absolutely wonderful and you can adjust that like i was saying love the track app feature love the ambient lighting and really the only thing with the track apps i would change 
is I would want Ford to put a top speed up there as well. Not to encourage people to drive faster necessarily, just because the Dodge Charger, the Dodge Challenger, they actually do that already. So I would love if Ford did that as well. But other than that, this car really is perfect for me personally. That's why I bought one. And again, it is the number one selling sports car in the world for good reasons. So absolutely ton of bang for your buck. I'm really not sure you can get more bang for your buck at this particular price point. But let me know what you guys think of the Mustang GT in the comments section below. If you have any further questions about this car, again, put it in the comments. I've owned it for a year and a half now, so I can certainly answer those for you guys. And as always, do appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you like, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.